right now we're looking at the moment at a loss of the Dow, just 66 points. We had been down more than 118. The S&P down five. Russell holding gains here. The small and mid caps up five points. So let us spin it forward to next week. The smart money. We bring it in right now. No commercial breaks. Nine minutes left before the closing bell rings. Brian Belsky, BMO Capital Markets Chief Market Strategist. Brian, uh, the last few minutes of trade in each final hour this week have been rock and roll wild. Do you expect that today? And what are you really bracing for for next week? Well, next week is uh, most typically going to be a, a pretty slow week, especially considering it's the last week in August and we have the holiday coming up. But, you know, what, what markets have proven clearly over the last several years that August it tends to be a pretty volatile month. That's why you know, when, when the market hit its bottom on Monday, we felt pretty confident in putting out our report that a bottom was in place, given the fact that this is pretty normal activity. But I don't know about you, but I'm pretty exhausted about after this week because, you know, volatility is all about uncertainty and uncertainty continues to climb. And we've got a lot of things to worry about over the intermediate term. But from a longer term perspective, we remain steadfast in our belief that the U.S. stock market is six years into a 20 uh, year bull market. And we think that uh, opportunities like this come around o only uh, every every few years in terms of, of picking off stocks after a, what we are calling a normal correction. So what we've seen is pretty normal and healthy. And, you know, a lot of investors have been looking for a pullback for a while. So the first line of our report was, yeah, you got to be careful what you ask for because you might just get it. Seven and a half minutes, seven and a half minutes before the closing bell rings. We want to join in the conversation with Brian, bring in Ross Gerber. He's with Gerber Kawasaki, a gutsy investor. We're glad to have you back from the West Coast. And John Trainer, yeah, People's you. United Bank. Sure, of course, Ross. Um, this week has been crazy, but did you change your investment moves at all this week? And if so, to what? Would you buy? Would you sell? Um, well, we bought this week and we took advantage of the correction on Monday to add Netflix under 100, which is a great company. It's just a very highly valued stock. So when we pulled back, we added to that. That was a very profitable trade for us this week. And then we added some of the very conservative names with big dividends to protect our clients from, you know, big potential losses. So we we'd made small moves, incremental moves, but it, they were very profitable this week. And we expect the bull market will continue. And I hope for 20 more years or whatever, you know. Well, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, these opportunities, John Trainer, uh, for which Ross capitalized upon buying Netflix and buying some dividend-paying stocks can be very attractive. But in hindsight, you know, as it's happening, it's very frightening. What did you do over at uh, uh, People's United Bank? Well, the first thing we did was really talk to the clients and get a sense, you know, how do they feel about the market? How do they feel about that thousand-point decline on Monday? And I was very pleased to see a lot of them were, were calm. They felt very good. So we were in buying, and as your other guest said, we were in buying stocks like Apple, Disney, and Home Depot, the quality stocks that we have in our portfolio, the higher conviction stocks that we had. But we were in buying on Monday, and we felt very good about it. Yeah, tell us the, your favorite dividend-paying stock right now, Ross. Well, it's got to be Apple because I know dividends are going up. I know they've got great products coming out just in another two weeks. And I know that their valuation is ridiculously low. So those are the kind of things I really look for in a stock. So that was one that we always buy right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and John likes Apple, too. Brian, what are your favorite moves right now in this market? Well, we continue to think that financials in America are the world's most feared sector. We think those, uh, financials and technology have actually helped define massive structural change we've seen in America really uh, since the 08, 09 lows. We also like industrials in America, especially those stocks that are more domestically focused. I think the big issue that most investors need to understand is that growth over the next several years is going to be driven by North America and by the U.S. We just have to believe it again in America. And we think the U.S. is going to continue to provide fundamental strength for the next several years. See what you see on the screen, folks? We've got the financials up. Art Cashin had told me that the names to sell on the close, which is now five minutes, five minutes away, are financials. So a little bit of weakness here in the financials. That's not too surprising, is it, John Trainer? considering that a lot of people are hanging on every word coming out of Jackson Hole and all of the central bankers who are gathered there. Should we see a rate hike in September? Not will we, but do you think we should? We, we believe we should see a rate hike in September. But again, we're, we're talking about going from zero to 25 basis points. 
What the Fed is trying to do is remove that 100 basis points that they put in during the dark days of 08, 09, that last cut. The economy is moving along very nicely. We saw GDP revised up. We would, we would agree with your, with your other guests. The U.S. is accelerating. The Fed should be raising yeah. in September. Mm -hmm. Ross, I don't know if you heard at the top of the hour, we had Duncan Niederauer, who used to run the New York Stock Exchange. He said, seriously, why are we paying attention to China when China and Shanghai's market had a huge run up over the last year of more than 60 percent? We weren't looking at that. Why are we looking at it now? How closely are you and your team at Gerber Kawasaki watching what's going on in China? Well what we watched it really close, but what we did this week was we dug in and really learned as much as possible about how their economy works. And what we learned is that we have very little exposure or influence in China at all. And there's only a handful of companies that really are affected dramatically by it. But where it matters is that China is the world's fastest growing market for new consumers of American goods. So it's important that China grow. And like cutting interest rates, like what they're doing, is a great move. And it's actually great for the United States as well as more Chinese consumers now will spend more money on U.S. goods. So China doesn't matter as much as people think. And also there was a, a buyout today. Wanda bought Ironman, which is actually the, the triathlete or the sport. And, you know, they're very confident. The Chinese are very confident about their future. So I think a lot of this stuff is very overblown. Well, and as we finish out here, Brian Belsky, we're erasing most of the losses of the day. The Russell even adding on to gains, the small and mid caps. And when you see a move like this up seven points, that's about two thirds of a percent. Those are the more growth oriented gutsy names. So it appears we might have a little bit of risk on maneuvering, at least in that area. OK, everybody, two and a half minutes, two and a half minutes. I just heard traders yell it's showtime. I think they're ready to close out the books on what has been an absolutely crazy week. And as we watch on the big board, the Dow falling 36 points. We want to thank John Trainer. We want to thank Ross Gerber and Brian Belsky for joining in all our traders here and Team Fox Business.